Hello, hello, hello. This is Elder Patillo. Once again, back with you from the Truth and Love Ministry, where a message has been designed with you in mind from the engrafted word of the Almighty God. I'm not going to be with you long today, so let us get into it. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for another day, God. Lord God, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace, God. Lord God, asking you to have your way. Lord God, allowing us to come forth, oh God, we're asking that you would touch, oh God, that you would send your word, that you would heal somebody, that you would call somebody to cry out to you, Lord, what must I do to be saved? And Lord, give them, Lord God, a word of peace, a word of comfort, a word of love from your word, God. Lord God, that they might, oh God, reach out to, reach out to you and be saved. Lord, in Jesus' name, we thank you right now. Thank God. Amen. All right. As I always say, or I mention every now and then, I don't want to be before you long, but I do want to be before you strong. So what we're going to be talking about today is God's unfathomable, unfathomable grace, a journey in redemption. God's unfathomable grace is unfathomable. You can't fathom it. You can't fully understand the grace of God. You can't fully get it. It's so deep that you can't really understand it. But he has given us some understanding. And to really get a picture of it, you have to go into his word. Once again, the title, God's Unfathomable Grace, A Journey in Redemption. What is redemption? To save something. To save something or to regain something that was lost. All right. So here we're talking about man. God's grace is designed to regain lost men. Today, men and women, mankind has lost its way. And many people have separated themselves from God. And some never knew him, but the way has always been made plain or there has always been grace because the scripture said, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men. No one leaves here without an opportunity to be saved. Okay? Now, there are some that didn't know better or some that didn't hear the word and they were saved, but that was grace. But now the scriptures, the word is being preached all over the world. So no one would be without excuse. The word of God and then there's the conscience. The conscience deals with a person that have not even heard the word. The conscience lets you know what's right from wrong. The conscience is why little children, even though you would tell you didn't tell them not to do this or not to do that, when they do it, they look around when you come and they hide or they have a guilty look on their face. Because even children have a conscience, but they don't have knowledge. That's why if something happened to them, God forbid, and they perish, they go to be with the Lord. But that conscience still works on a level of innocence. But there's something going on. They, they know that there's something going on. Once they become a certain age, they realize, hey, I was told, don't touch this. Oh, I know that this is not mine. And if I bother that and take it, I'm stealing. It's, but see, it's unfathomable. I can't, I can't break it down like it could be broken down because it's so deep. One of the reasons why, one of the things that make it so deep is, why? You know what? Matter of fact, let me stop right here and just go and dig into the lesson. God's unfathomable grace, a journey of salvation, a journey of redemption. The scripture says this, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that of not, is that not of yourself? It is a gift of God. That's Ephesians 2 and 8. 
For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is a gift of God. God gives us the gift of salvation. What does it mean to be saved? By faith, we are saved because we have asked God to forgive us of our sins. And not only did we ask him to forgive us, but we turned from our sins. We repented. Repenting is not just asking God to forgive you, but it's turning from your sins. All right? There's one thing for me to say, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. But if I hadn't turned from my sins and gone the other way, then I have not truly repented. And so God gives the opportunity to repent. There's some people that you want to repent to or apologize to or say you're sorry to. And sometimes people are so honorary and so mean and so unforgiving that they will turn their backs to you and they will say no. And they will not forgive you and they would hate you. And since we're human, and we may not do that, but we can kind of understand it a little bit because we're human. We've been mad at some people and we didn't want to forgive them. But the unfathomable grace of God, listen, it's amazing that what we have done to God, that he would open up a way and open up his heart. And open up the opportunity for us to say, I'm sorry, and then give us the strength and give us the will and give us the mindset to turn from our sins. He doesn't have to do that. And when I think about all the drugs I did, when I think about all the liquor I drank, when I think about all the people that I robbed and stole from, When I think about the people that I had sex with, some of them, listen, R. Kelly stories wasn't new. And some of them, you know, they were sleeping. Some was drunk and all, you know what I'm saying? Just, I was filthy. I was nasty. Why? One songwriter said, I don't know why he loved me. I don't know why he cared. I don't know why he sacrificed his life for me. But I'm glad, so glad he did. The reason why I say I don't know why, I don't know how, I don't know God's mindset on a, for, for saving somebody like me because it's unfathomable. I can't get it. I offended him. There's things that I've done because I grew up in in church and because I grew up with the consciousness of God. There's things that I did right in front of him or looking at him or right under his eyes. Because the scripture said, for the eyes of the Lord is beholding everything, including the evil and the good. He saw me, and I knew he saw me, and I did it anyway. That's why a songwriter says, what manner of love is this? His love is special. A special kind of love, a love that will forgive even though you offended him over and over and over again. People are not like that. Some people can't, listen, I want to forgive you, but I can't. You did so wrong. You did me so wrong. I can't forgive you. But God says, I forgive you. All you got to do is come and ask me for forgiveness. I've already done it, but you need to ask for it so I can apply it. And some people, the other part of the story is some people are too ashamed to ask because they know they did terrible things. But God is letting you know the door is open. You can come to me and repent and then turn from your wicked ways. I'll accept you. One scripture said that I will in no wise cast you out. But we got to ask for it. All of that is amazing. 
because there was angels up in heaven who turned Lucifer, who end up turning into Satan. He tricked a third of the heavenly host, the angels. And now they're in a position where they could never be forgiven. Now, I, like I said, the grace of God is unfathomable. That whole situation is so deep. And one day we can go into it. But he saved us. Or He give, He give, he's given up to us the opportunity to be saved. To repent. So it says here, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. You didn't do anything. Matter of fact, you did everything to be unforgiven. You did everything that deserved the greatest punishment. You did everything that you should be in judgment and sent to hell. You done everything. But if you've given your life to God, that grace has wiped all of that stuff away. If you accepted Jesus, Yahshua, into your life, all of that stuff is wiped away. Why? Because he died and paid the price. He paid the penalty. He paid this ultimate sacrifice that we wouldn't have to do it. What man of love is this? What, what is this? What kind of love? I've never seen where people was, someone would sacrifice his life. I've never seen anything where a father would send his son to die for somebody that's been offending him all their lives. That's beyond my understanding. Why? Something like that could even exist, especially for somebody like me. What about you? What about you? Have you took stock? Have you taken stock of your life to see how bad and how terrible some of the things you did were? And then do you understand the grace of God is here? where you can go to him and repent. You can tell him that you're sorry and then you can turn from it and you can be set free. No more guilt, no more shame. That's the grace of God. The grace of God is unmerited. It's unmerited. You can't do anything for it. It transcends our understanding but it lights the way of our understanding that we can be redeemed. We can be saved. We can be brought back to God. One scripture called it the atonement. We can be at one meant, at home meant to God. We can get back to God. All right. Let's go further. We need to try to understand the grace or I need to try to help you understand the grace and you need to open up your minds a little bit to understand or try to understand the grace of God. We won't fully understand until one day when everything is going to be made clear. But right now, the scripture, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore, he said, God resisted the proud but giveth grace unto the humble. James 4 and 6. He resisted the proud. He don't want to hear nothing from the proud. He don't want to hear nothing. If you're a proud person, you can't humble yourself. You're always right. Everything you do is okay. You're proud. You think you all that. You think you, they say all that in a bag of chips. You can think you all of that in the potato chip factory. You proud, but God is resisting you. God don't want to hear from you. God ain't thinking about you if you understand my speech. But he give grace to the humble, those that say, I've been wrong. I've been wrong. I don't know where I heard that. Where did I hear that? The man, somebody came to the person and they said, I've been wrong. I've been wrong. Oh, many years ago, Richard Pryor, he, when he talked about going to Africa and he he realized that he didn't want to use the N-word anyway, anymore. And when he came back, he was talking to somebody. He said, man, I've been wrong. 
I've been wrong. We ain't no N word. He understood. And, he, and from that point on, I believe, because I didn't I didn't I didn't live with him or walk around with him, but I believe from that that point he turned away from using the N-word. All right. Wherefore he says, God resisted the proud, but give us grace to the humble. When we humble ourselves, God loves that. And the reason why he wants us to humble is ourselves because we ain't nothing anyway. What, how, what you going to be proud about? What did you do? If he hadn't put breath in your body, you would have dropped dead. He don't care if your alarm clock went off this morning. If he didn't put breath in your body, if he didn't wake you up, your alarm clock would still be going off right now if somebody hadn't discovered it. So how are you going to stick your chest out? If you're a great singer, that's beautiful. But you don't have your, no business sticking your chest out talking about how good you can sing. God gave you that voice. If you're smart, you don't, you're don't. you not supposed to be walking around all proud and arrogant because you're smart. God bless you with that brain. You're proud. You'll mess around and God will allow you. He won't take your mind from you. He'll allow something to take your mind. He, allows, he will allow something to show you that you ain't all that smart. But by grace, even his grace doesn't destroy people when they're walking around in their pride. But at some point, the scriptures say pride goes before destruction. And what that means is when you see pride, pride is in the front. And right after that, you'll see destruction. Okay? Why? Because he resists the proud. But grace is here right now for proud people to turn around and humble themselves so he can receive them. But that's a gift. That's a gift. You didn't, he was looking down, he smiled on you. He, no, 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 no. We deserve hell. But if you are saved, it was by the grace of God. And if you're going to be saved, it's going to be by the grace and the mercy of God. But you can't count on that if you are proud. You must humble yourself. Humility is a whole nother lesson. We can talk about that and we will. We'll talk about humility later. That's a different message. Grace is given to the humble, acknowledging a need for God's mercy and kindness. Grace is God's mercy and kindness. Mercy. When you deserve to die, mercy and grace. When you deserve to be locked up and they throw away the key. As a matter of fact, they melt the key so nobody can find it and use it again. That's what we deserve. But grace, it's grace that I'm not locked up. I've been locked up. I did time in prison. It's grace that I'm still not in there. Listen, I was so terrible in those streets that when I did finally receive time, when they handed me the time, which was very little, I cried. I didn't cry because I was so sad because I had to do two measly years. I cried because I knew that God had spared me because I should have been there for much longer. There were times when I was burglarizing in people's house. I had a gun, and if they had had a gun and started shooting, I would have shot back at them or they would have killed me. Either way, my life would have been destroyed. But God never allowed that to happen. That was grace. That was mercy. My life was spared. My life was saved. But I didn't receive salvation, which is living for God and having his protection and having his guidance and having his love in my life. That was totally unmerited favor in those situations. 
But when you add the grace with the mercy, salvation comes in. So I, had, I was able to leave that lifestyle. I turned my back on it. I asked God to forgive me and I turned my back on it, on, on them. But all the people I stole from, all the people that I robbed at gunpoint, all the people that I misused and abused, the people that I was the first one that stuck a needle in them, they're dead now from drug overdose and for drug usage. I started it. They died. I'm still alive. That's the grace and the mercy of God. Why me? Why am I still alive that they've been gone for years? I don't know. It's unfathomable. It's unfathomable. His grace towards me. Somebody said, I just want to say thank you. The prodigal son. Do we know about the prodigal son? When we talk about redemption, the prodigal son was a he was a young man. It was him and a brother and the father. And they had a great farm or a great land. And they worked and they made money. They were rich. Or they were wealthy. And the son said, listen. Give me the money, my portion, because I'm of age now. I want the portion that I work for because I'm getting, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I don't want to live with you no more. Some of us have heard that from our children. And it was, some of us was glad. You grown, get out. But then there was some of us we knew. Uh-uh. You not ready. But since you grown, I can't stop you. So we let him go. That's what this man did. He let his son go and his son took everything he had and he went out and he wasted it and his life was nothing. He blew everything and he was brought down to a piece of bread. He was brought down to a nothing and a nobody. This, the scriptures say he lived righteously. In other words, he, 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 he parted. He was bawling for a little while. He had it going on. He was stunned, fronting, and everything else. But he lost it all. The scripture talked about how he, he could have eaten or did eat with the hogs out there. But one day he came to himself. And he said, why am I still out here doing this? See, I'm sure... The fact that he went so low as to having to be out there and eat things that he normally didn't eat and live a way that he normally didn't live, I'm sure that for him to get that far, some pride had to be there about not going back. I can't go back. Look at how I left. I can't go back. Look how arrogant I was. I can't go back. Look how mean I was. I can't go back. Look how proud I was. But one day he came to himself and he realized, I got to go back. If I go back, I could be all right. If I go back, I can get my life back together. Some of you that's listening at this video, you left God, but you can go back. Pray tell. Some people don't make it back. You left God. In most cases, you'll be able to make it back. That's another the times when people that left can't get back, that's another story. But for the most part, most situations, except for extreme circumstances, you can get back if you left God. You know you left God. You need to go back. You need to come back to him. You need to do like the prodigal son did. He humbled himself and he went back to his father. And guess what his father did? His father received him. His father, the scripture said he wept. He, he wept on his neck. Grabbed him and put his face, buried his face in his neck and just cried because his son was back. That's how God is today. He wants you to come back. Why? 
because that's who God is. What are we talking about? We're talking about his unfathomable grace, the journey of redemption. The prodigal son went on the journey. The journey was the road he took there and the road he went back. And he got saved. He was redeemed. Talking to you today. Have you been redeemed? Have you gone back to God? Have you given your life to God? By accepting his son, Yeshua, the Christ, Jesus. Have you done that? The prodigal son, the parable of the prodigal son, God's boundless forgiveness and love for those who repent and return. Despite the son's waywardness, the father's grace and love welcomed him back, symbolizing God's unyielding compassion for us. That story was written. It was a true story, but it was used to show us that we can go back. If you're listening to me, if you reading, if you if you reading what I'm telling you, it's time for you to go back. It's time for you to go back, young man. It's time for you to go back. It's time. Why wait? Why not come to the Lord right now? One song write a song and said, "Let's go back to God." Grace and works, listen, not of works, lest any man should boast. That's Ephesians 2 and 9. 2 and 9. Grace is not of works. There's nothing you can do for this grace that we're talking about. Grace is not earned through deeds. It's a gift freely given to all who seek it, emphasizing the unmerited nature of God's favor. Everybody, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Everybody deserved to be in hell. Everybody. The continued grace of God. Scripture, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of needs. Hebrews 4 and 16. Hebrews 4 and 16 says, we can go boldly to the throne of grace. What that means is not bold. You kick the door down. Look at God. I'm here and I need. No, that's not boldly. That means through all the guilt and the shame and all the things that you've done and the way that the devil is telling you, you shouldn't go because he's not going to forgive you because you've done too much. You can boldly walk away from Satan and his lies and you can go to Christ and you can say, forgive me. Come into my heart. Save me. Deliver me from sin. Deliver me from the way, the way that I'm living. Deliver me. And he'll do that for us. Scripture. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. For Christ's sake, God has forgiven us. 432. For Christ's sake, he died on the cross that we might be forgiven, that we might have a right to the tree of life. He's forgiven us for his son's sake. Because the scripture said there's, a, there's only one mediator between God and man, and that's the man, Christ Jesus. Ain't no pope mediating for you. There's no minister that can mediate for you. They can pray for you, but they can't go to God and say, hey, look, I put my life on the line. That's what Christ is doing. He's saying, look, Father, I put my life on the line for him. Please give him another chance. He's pleading our case to God. He said, be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another. You got to forgive just like God forgave us. And he did it for Christ's sake. A recipient of God's grace, we are called to extend the same grace to others through forgiveness and kindness, embracing God's grace. And he says unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect 
in weakness, the unfathomable grace of God. There are things that you're going to go through that he's not going to take it from you, but he's going to give you grace to go through it. He's going to give you grace. There's people that are in the hospital. They had to go through some major, major procedures. And some of them were painful, but the grace, they got grace to make it through it. Some things could have killed them, but the grace, sometimes that grace come through peace. Sometimes that grace come through God not letting something hurt as bad as it's supposed to. Sometimes that grace is just what you needed to get through that grace. We got to embrace that. God's, uh, God's grace is abundant and sustains us in our weakest, showcasing his strength. When we are weak, then is he strong. So I say of the Lord, he is my help. He is my strength. Let the weak say I'm strong. Why should I say I'm strong and I know I'm weak? Because he is my strength. He said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. God's grace is abundance and sustains us in our weakness. Therefore, let me say this before I close. The scripture said, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. One more time, but you but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Second Peter 3 18. Embrace the, if, if embrace the immeasurable grace of God. Grow in his grace and reflect it in our lives, bringing glory to his name. Let me reread that. Embrace the immeasurable grace of God grow in his grace and reflect it in our lives, bringing glory to his name. Reflect that. Let people see. Let people know. Testify. Tell it. Tell it. Let people see that by grace is why you saved. Somebody said, I am what I am by the grace of God. Let us bow our heads in prayer, thanking God for his unfathomable grace and seeking the strength to live in its life each day. Thank you, Lord, for touching. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for the people that hear it. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy, oh God, and your grace and your loving kindness and your long suffering. Oh God, somebody, you've been waiting on them for a long time. Give them to know that your grace, oh God. Lord God, your grace endureth, Lord God, but for some people, it runs out, God. Give them to know, God, that time is of the essence, God. Lord God, give us to redeem the time for the days are evil, God. Lord God, and the evil men are waxing worse, oh God. Lord God, shield, protect us, oh God, and give us grace. Grace to come unto you and grace, oh God, to make it through these tough times. Lord, in Jesus' name. We thank you right now. Thank God. Amen. Well, without much more to do, I'm out. Peace. Have a good evening or morning or whatever it's going to be when you see this video. Amen. I love you. I'll be back, Lord willing.